Hello. Welcome back. You're watching Impossible Color. And this is the before and after series. So I've got a landscape picture here today. And this is beautiful waterfalls at the end of a gorge hike in Oregon. And let's look at Adobe Camera Raw and see where we went with this. So we're looking at the before straight out of the camera. It's a little bit of a tricky shot because we're dealing with some pretty high contrast. We've got the really white dress and the white waterfalls coming down, but then we have these deep shadows in the cliffs. So let's see what our after did. Let's just turn off our indicators. So the after is, uh, it looks a little bit strange. We've got quite a bit of blue here, but um, we've got a lot of details coming out in the cliffs now. A little bit overexposed on the water. So I did actually did a separate exposure for that. So there's the slightly darker on the water one. And you can see that there's quite a bit of change to all the elements in the exposure area. A little bit of clarity added, some saturation, and some noise reduction in there. And no color changes to the hues, but the uh, saturation was pretty universally added uh, with a little bit extra in some areas like the green. And the luminance, uh, some of the yellow added to give a little bit more detail popping out in some of these yellowy green areas, the foliage and the, and the moss and the cliffs. All right, let's open this up in Photoshop. Fit on the screen. So this is our before and our after. You can see a lot more richness came into that. It's not dominated by all of these cool colors. We really have a nice kind of relationship between the warmer greens and yellows and browns and reds and then the cooler greens and aquas and blues of the water. So how did we get there? Let's turn off the layers. So as the first step, I brought in the waterfalls at the second exposure. So we get these details showing in here and it's not just of a blown out mess and then I created a custom vignette I kind of wanted this to feel like a more I guess voyeuristic or more intimate image and by keyholing the the lighting just right to the center it gave more of that effect now I didn't use the lens correction or anything I just what I used for that one was uh, just a levels adjustment and then I painted my own mask. So you can see the mask in red there. And the next step was the model. You know, this is more of a, a landscape than it is a portrait, but uh, pretty much in there for scale. But I still wanted to make sure that wasn't any major issues with the model. There was some chromatic aberration. You see this kind of weird uh, glow that's happening around and it's kind of some areas of the skin are getting uh, blown out to kind of a gray blue color. So I just touched all those up. And the next step was I did a color balance to adjust my global colors. And I think this is really the biggest step forward uh, for the image at this point. Let's zoom in here and just kind of have a look. It's a lot more richness, the contrast in the colors. Even the blues, we're getting a nice array of purples and blues and aquas forming a relationship here instead of just kind of a blob of blue 
more separation in the greens and the yellows and even some reds creeping through some richness on that rock and then the selective color we just took that a step further and you start to see some more depth taking place here and, and the reason that that's it's working that way is because I did I adjusted the black on some of these and uh, I don't know it just gives it a little bit something extra And the next step is some dodge and burn. Now, a lot of people use this for portraits, but it works extremely well for landscapes as well. So if I turn that on, you can see just a lot more depth is taking place here. And basically, the major forms just are just brought out a lot more. The details are still there. You can see still see individual clumps of grass and and moss forming here but if I turn this on and off you can see that this major mass is being brought out so when you look at a distance it just looks a lot more sculptured you carry it all along this ridge you can see it kind of clumping this cliff face into larger defined shapes rather than a camouflaged mass a little bit of highlighting along this little log in the rocks here to just draw some attention to the platform that she's standing on and if I go in here you can see that I separated it into some highlights and you could do this a number of different ways. You could use curves, you could use brightness, contrast, you could use levels, but uh, I decided to go with curves for this one. And then I did a separate one for burning. So my shadows were just brought a little bit deeper. You get a much more sculptured look. And as a final step, we do a sharpen. Made a little bit of a mask on the sharpen. Keep the attention away from the corners. There is still some high frequency details there and I really didn't want the eyes being drawn up there when I sharpened. So let's just zoom in here and kind of see what's happening with this sharpen. A lot more detail being brought out. Makes that all these rocks along here nice and crisp. As small as the model is, just helps her stand out a little bit more. Not so blurry. And there you have it. That is the before and the after. Oh, I hope you learned something today. If you like what you saw, please leave a comment in the section below and if you don't then yeah don't bother <laughs> i'll see you in the next video this is impossible color